this this video is over Newton's second law and Newton's second law is talking about accelerating objects um, that have mass by using force uh, which is F equals MA or acceleration equals the net force over a mass and we're going to start talking about that uh, by using elevator problems so we're going to talk about this uh, person in an elevator and this person's going to be 80 kilograms and the elevator is not going to be accelerating it's going to be accelerating at 0 meters per second squared up so we're going to solve this when the acceleration equals 0 <clears throat> and we do that with free body diagrams now a free body diagram will show all the forces acting on one particular object so the object we're talking about is the person in the elevator. So we're going to draw a free body diagram for just the person in the elevator. So there's our 80 kilogram object and he has weight and then he's being pushed on to or pushed up on by the surface or the, you know, bottom of the elevator. Uh, with a normal force. And the weight is mass times gravity, which is his mass, 80 kilograms, uh, times the acceleration due to gravity, which is 10, and gets 800 newtons, and then his normal force is up. Now, since we know that the acceleration is zero, that should tell us that the net force is zero. And we should be able to double check that, because the acceleration is zero, and the, acceleration is zero the net force is zero, we, Fn minus Fg should equal zero and therefore Fn should equal Fg. Um, and so the Fn equals 800 newtons. And that makes it very nice. Um, when any time an object is at rest, the particular net force is zero, and you should be able to double check it by doing Ma equals Fn minus Fg and go through the process and double check it. It all works out very nice. But now we're going to do one where the elevator is accelerating upwards at 5 meters per second squared. So we're going to solve this down here at 5 meters per second squared, and it's up, so it's going to be a positive number. We we'll draw a free body diagram with weight down and normal force up, and we should be able to notice that the normal force should be greater than the weight because it's accelerating up, so the floor of the elevator must be pushing harder than our weight. Um, and that, that should be something we should be able to tell by what is going on in the situation. The net force should be up. Uh, the net force should be greater up because the gravity, we know he has weight and it's acting down. The net force should be greater up and therefore the normal force should be greater up. And we'll go ahead and do that with, uh, with math. Uh, so Fn should be greater than Fg. Let's just make sure we keep that in mind. And that's because the net force is up in this case and acceleration is up. So our weight is 800 newtons. And the net force is equal to Fn minus Fg, which in this case is 800. So the net force also equals mass times acceleration. So we make sure we, since they both equal net force, we can set both equations equal to each other. So Ma equals Fn minus Fg, which in this case is 800 newtons. The mass is 80. The acceleration is 5 positive, which equals Fn minus 800. 80 times 5 is 400, which equals Fn minus 800. To solve for Fn, we add 800 to both sides. And that makes the normal force 1,200 newtons. The net force in this case, the net force was 400 newtons up. The normal force, the normal force is 1,200 newtons up and weight is 800 newtons down. So the net force is the difference between those. We wrote our net force equation as Fn minus 800, or Fn minus, eight, or minus Fg. So the normal force minus the weight of the object should be a number positive to tell us that the object is accelerating up, and that's 400. We got that earlier. You can see it over there on the left side of our equation. But 1,200 newtons is the normal force, and it should be larger than the weight in order for the object to accelerate up. Um, so the next one we can do is an object that's accelerating down. So we'll go ahead and try that. An object accelerating at the same rate, but down. Uh, typically in this class we use up to be positive and down to be negative. 
So we'll use 5 meters per second squared down. We have our object. Still 800 newtons in weight. Doesn't change. And our normal force is up. And in this case, our net normal force should be less than our weight. We're going to go ahead and check it. We know net force equals MA and net force equals FN minus FG. MA, setting those two equations equal to, equal to each other, MA equals the normal force minus the weight. Weight is 800. Normal force we don't know. Mass is 80 and acceleration is negative 5 because down is negative uh, for us. As long as it's down, it's negative. And you can choose the frame of reference to be different. I typically use up as positive and down as negative to keep everything simple. And so when I have a negative number, I kind of know the next direction it is going. So I now have a negative 400 as my net force, which tells me it's accelerating down. The weight is still 800. Uh, so negative 400 equals Fn minus 800, and I add 800 to both sides to counter that. And therefore, my normal force is 800. And it makes sense that it is less than my weight, considering we're uh, accelerating downward. So these are three examples of at rest or constant velocity. So the first example, acceleration is zero. We could be at rest or we could be moving at a constant velocity up or down. It doesn't matter, but it's constant velocity. Then we have accelerating up, and we also have accelerating down. And you should be able to check what has happened by inspection. If we're accelerating up, Fn should be greater than Fg. If we're accelerating down, Fn should be less than Fg. Um, and as long as you keep up as positive and down as negative, if we're accelerating up, your net force should be a positive number. And if you keep the same frame of reference, if we're accelerating down, the net force should be a negative number. And in both of our equations, that's what we got. So now we're going to move on to... Coupled motion. Coupled motion is where things are put together by uh, strings or they are touching, or but, but basically the, the two objects are coupled together. So what I have here is I'm, my best attempt at a three-dimensional table. And I'm going to have a mass sitting on top of it, we'll call mass one, and it's going to be attached to a rope the rope's going over a pulley that is considered to be frictionless and negligible mass attached to a mass 2 that is hanging down there. Now, objects that are tied together are going to have the exact same acceleration. Or objects that are, uh, you know, two objects next to each other, like two desks next to each other, and you're pushing one into the other and they both accelerate, they'll accelerate at the same rate. So objects tied together will have the same acceleration. Uh, so these two objects being tied together should have the exact same acceleration. We'll uh, apply numbers to these masses. Um, mass 1 will be 1 kilogram, mass 2 will be 2 kilograms, and the acceleration is going to be down because the larger mass will uh, control this situation. Drawing our free body diagrams on each object, what we have is on mass 1, uh, it has weight and then it's sitting on a table so there's a surface pushing against it and then it has tension pulling on it uh, in a downward direction. Uh, in this case it looks to the right but as if it kept going over the pulley and over the side it would end up going in a downward direction so to the right is fine but recognizing that it will be going down eventually. Uh, mass 2 has a weight and then mass, uh, mass 2 also has a tension up which we'll call in a positive direction. Um, <clears throat> at that point we go ahead and recognize that Fg here for this one is M2g and uh, Fg up there should be M1g. And we're going to show you two ways to do this. This will be the hard way and then we'll finish the hard way and then I'll show you the easy way. Now the hard way is writing equations and we'll do it for M1. Uh, M1 has the normal force equals the weight of the object. And how we know that is that the object isn't moving up and it's not moving down. It's sitting on that table. If there wasn't a tension pulling on it, the object would sit at rest. So the two objects are countering each other and therefore in equal and opposite directions and equal each other. So we have all of our net forces in the x direction based on the picture. And it's going to be the mass 1 times the acceleration. And then the net force in the x direction will also equal the tension. Uh, for our second mass, it's hanging in a vertical direction. So mass 2 times acceleration, so MA, and then we'll also have tension minus weight. 
and that is net force equals that. We also have uh, uh, the ability to set those equations equal to each other, which we always do, since they both equal net force. Uh, for the uh, green lettering here, we have M1A is going to equal tension by setting the two net forces in the x direction equal to each other. And then uh, for M2 in the blue lettering, we have net forces M2A, and we also have net forces tension minus weight, and so M2A equals tension minus weight. Now, when we look at this, we should notice that acceleration is down. So, because you can see it's, the M2 is going to pull the object off the table eventually, the acceleration is rotating all in the same direction around that pulley down. Uh, rotating is probably not what I'm looking for, but it's going to accelerate down. Um, so therefore, that makes this a negative tension for mass 1, because as that tension continues to go um, around, it's going to be in a negative direction. And if we look at this, uh, look at our picture over on the left, the M2 mass going down is a negative direction, and the tension is an up in a positive direction. And for the M1 mass, that should be a negative because it's going to rotate all the way down to that negative direction. Now we should need to combine these equations. This is the hard way of doing it, so just bear with me. Uh, M1A plus M2A is going to equal negative tension plus positive tension minus weight. And it's nice when math works out. A negative tension plus a positive tension should cancel those two things. And so we have M1 plus M2 times A. I've pulled an A out because they are common, so I've factored out an A uh, there. And that is going to equal Fg, which this Fg is for the second mass. That second mass is going to pull it down. So that Fg is M2g, which we got from our picture over there on the left. And all the blue lettering up there. So M1 plus M2a equals M2g. We need to solve for the acceleration. And we divide by the total effective mass. All that mass there. We call it the total effective mass. So acceleration equals M2g over M1 plus M2. And when we do this, we plug in our numbers, we should get 20 over 3, and that equals 6.67 meters per second squared for the acceleration. Um, and guys, that should be negative. So let me make sure I add that in. Uh, M2g, which was a weight, should be a negative number. Divided by the positive masses should give me a negative acceleration. Now over here we have an easy way. An easy way is streamlining the process. So you take your one kilogram mass and you basically lift the two kilogram mass, not, not literally, but more of a figurative sense, is to recognize that you're streamlining them into a straight line. So the two kilogram mass, rotating it up to be equal with the M1 mass in the x direction and, and pretending that the weight is pushed out to the right or pulling it out to the right rather than gravity pulling it straight down. So we just streamline it in a straight line direction. We still draw our free body diagram for mass 1 where Fn is up and weight is down and then tension to the right and then the 2 kilogram object has its weight to the right now. We recognize that since the object is on the table the mass 1 or the 1 kilogram object is on the table that the Fg minus Fn or Fg and Fn are equal and opposite just like they were before and the tensions in this particular equation are pointing in opposite directions so since they're pointing in opposite directions those also cancel out and it helps us because now we can just combine those two masses as if they were both being pulled by one weight so now we have a 3 kilogram object, so we combine those two masses, and it's being pulled by the only force that we have left, which in this case is M2g, because Fg in this case is the second mass times its gravity. So the 3 kilogram object is being pulled by M2g, so Ma equals M2g, because the net force, like we've been doing all this time, net force equals Ma, and it equals the forces acting on the object. And then we set those two equations equal to each other. So net force equals Ma, and net force equals M2g. Uh, so now we're going to plug in numbers. So the total effective mass is 3, and it equals 2 as the second mass times the gravity of that object. Divide by 3, and we get 6.67 meters per second squared. And again, 
that should be negative there, and we should have a negative acceleration here. Makes everything work out a little bit quicker, a lot nicer, uh, and we'll do a few practice problems with these in class to make sure we're all good at it and move on from there.